Patients who've lost their kidney function still have to be able to clean their blood and normally that's done by a procedure called dialysis where blood from the body is passed through a machine that cleanses the blood, takes some of the fluid off and then returns it to the bloodstream. Hemodialysis is done with two types of devices. One is a catheter is placed in the bloodstream and the other is getting blood from an AV access. So let's first talk about catheters. Catheters are large bore catheters that go into central veins, usually the jugular vein. Sometimes when those have closed off, you might have to put them in the femoral vein, but basically the tip of the catheter has to be in a large vein like the inferior vena cava or sometimes the right atrium. And by having the catheter in those large veins, these large bore catheters are able to take out a large volume of blood flow, run it through the dialysis machine, and then return it back to the body. There's problems that occur with these catheters. They can get infected, they can have clot formation and stop functioning properly, they can get kinked, and so we don't usually consider that a long-term solution. A more long-term solution is to have an arterial venous access, either a fistula, which is when an artery is joined to a vein and the vein dilates up and the vein is used to place needles into and use for dialysis. If someone can have a fistula, sometimes a graft is used, in our, a graft that is bridging between an artery and a vein. That is fairly effective, but it is not as durable, doesn't work as well as the fistula, so it's usually a secondary choice after a fistula. Now, in the practice here, we deal a lot with these type of access with dialysis patients. One of our roles is when we see a patient in consultation is to help them find arteries and veins that can be used for creation of AV fistulas by the surgeon. And so we'll do something called vein mapping where we take an ultrasound and look at the veins in the arms. We'll do venography, which is where we look at the veins with contrast diameter x-ray guidance to make sure that the veins are not damaged because what we don't want to have happen is a surgeon to create an AV access in the arm or the groins and then it doesn't function because some of the veins are narrowed. So one of our roles is to assess the veins in the body and also the arteries in the body to help the surgeon find the best spots for creating AV access. Now once an AV access is created, not all the time is it able to be used because there may be some problems. So in the case of a fistula, maybe the vein wasn't as large as we were hoping and it's not getting dilated enough. It has to be big enough so that the dialysis nurses are able to feel it and puncture it safely. And in situations where it hasn't matured adequately, we can go in and do a procedure called what we call a BAM procedure, B-A-M, which stands for balloon assisted maturation angioplasty. So let's say we have a small fistula, it's maybe only three millimeters in diameter, and we'd rather it be six or seven millimeters in diameter. What we'll do is do a fistulagram where we put a little tiny catheter in the fistula, inject some x-ray dye, and we'll identify where the fistula is too small, and then we can place a slightly larger balloon in the fistula, maybe a four millimeter or five millimeter balloon, and stretch it open. Now, when someone has a functioning access, either a fistula or a graft, there's problems that can develop with that access. They may have prolonged bleeding when the needles are removed from dialysis. They may have problems with adequate clearance on the dialysis machine. They may have problems with their arm swelling because there's a central vein that's narrowed. In all those situations, we will see the people in consultation and, and refer them for a fistulagram that we can just perform here in the office. And what we'll do is look for the abnormal areas of narrowing and generally we can open those up and, with an angioplasty balloon or sometimes we'll, we'll perform a stenting procedure. Now in situations where there's narrowing has become more severe, sometimes the AV access, whether it's a fish or a graft, will clot off, and in that situation we'll perform an endovascular thrombectomy. Thrombectomy means we just remove the clot. So it's a two-part procedure where we first have to remove the clot from the AV access, but then we also have to find out why it clotted, and generally we'll perform an angioplasty of the narrowed area or a stent. There's another interesting category of problems that dialysis patients can get and that's called ischemic steel syndrome. And that's a situation where the affected extremity, whether it's the 
hands when you have an upper arm AV axis or the feet if you have an AV axis in your groin is not getting enough blood flow and so in the case of the hand you can have numbness and tingling usually occurs on dialysis sometimes at night and in worse situations people will have it 24 hours a day and in worse situations people can even have tissue loss have a sore on their finger or have gangrene and what our strategy in that patient is, is we want to find out why the hand is not getting enough blood flow. So we'll look at the arteries that are supplying the arm, from the aortic arch all the way down to the fingers. Sometimes we'll find an abnormal area of narrowing, and we can open up the artery with angioplasty or stenting.